Hey, welcome everybody. Jason here again from Alliance Corp Property Experts. Got another great question from our viewers. Should I purchase property through a self-managed super fund? Okay, so obviously this is talked about a lot. It's been around for a little while now in terms of what you can do with your super, take more control of that super, make some decisions there in terms of where those funds are being invested. At a very high level, I'm gonna run through some of the benefits and some of the reasons as to why you might do it. But remember, this isn't themed as financial advice for you guys. You must always speak to a financial planner before you make any decisions. So the reality of why we need to consider this, if you think about the average super fund uh, for men and women, currently it sits at approximately $200,000 for men, and unfortunately it's a lot lower for women sitting at $100,000. If you have a look at retiring on, on, on super of around $200,000, it means that you're gonna be on an income uh, with your super and the pension of approximately $31,000 for a male, and as little as $27,000 for a female. It is not a lot of money, guys, all right? So unfortunately, the vast majority of people, almost 82% uh, of people out there, have to either keep working or end up on the pension, and the pension's just $23,000 a year. So there's an opportunity here to maybe get a little bit more out of your super. And one of the ways you can do that is you can look at the opportunity of potentially using your super to invest in property. So if we have a think about, say, $200,000 that you might be, might be sitting there in your super, currently a lot of industry funds are generating around that 6%, which is pretty, pretty standard, giving you a $12,000 per annum uh, income. You can leverage this now. You can potentially set up a self-managed super fund. You can't do it with all funds, but most funds you can. And then use those funds to invest in purchasing a property. So you would use uh, that $200,000, you'd then leverage up and borrow some funds from the bank uh, using the, the property also there as security, purchase a property at 500, target properties where you can get a similar return, so in terms of capital growth, 6%. But now, you've, now what we're looking at is instead of getting 6% on the 200, you're getting now 6% on the 500, all right? So now we're looking at $30,000 per annum versus $12,000 per annum. So there's a potential opportunity there. Again, speak to your financial planner about this um, in terms of being able to leverage your super, get it working harder for you, get it into some bricks and mortar if that's what you're really comfortable with um, and, and, and generate some high returns so you can get uh, build up that super more quickly uh, before you hit the retirement phase. Some of the other quick benefits there also too, um, the capital gains tax on your properties that you sell on your super um, only incur a 10% capital gains tax, um, which is very low, so that's very attractive. And once you're in pension phase, it can be as little as zero. So if you did decide to sell those properties in pension phase, you don't actually pay any capital gains tax. There's some significant savings there. Also on the income that the fund generates, um, you're capped at 15%. So again, again a very low tax bracket um, uh, of 15%. So commonly what some people might do is they might buy some investment properties in their own personal name and build that portfolio up. They might have some through their self managed super fund. And then when they hit retirement, they'll have a chat to the financial planner. And there might be an argument there to either sell some of those properties that you have in your personal name, uh, you'll pay higher capital gains tax, but then use those funds to pay down the loans in the properties in your self-managed super fund, because then the rental income that you generate is, 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 is taxed at a much lower rate, or you might there might be an argument to do it the other way, and potentially sell some of those properties in your self-managed super fund because you're not paying capital gains tax, and then use some of those funds to pay down the loans on the properties uh, in your own personal name. So great options here, guys, have a look at it. We've got some eBooks on this. Um, do your research, speak to your financial planners, all right, but there are some benefits here, um, and certainly we can help you with that process. Happy investing, thank you.